Hey guys and welcome to this brand new video. Today we'll talk about Brookfield Renewable Partners again. I've talked about that stock twice, now it's the third time and the reason for that is because they had an investor day recently and I wanted to give you just a quick update about what's new, what happened with the company and whether it's a buy, hold or sell right now. And with that said, let's go straight ahead. For the sake of this video, we're going to use the corporate profile that they published in June 2023, but I'll link the presentation of the investor day down there. There you have way more information, but that would be too much for this video. So if you're new and you do not know what Brookfield does, let me just explain that to you. And also click subscribe that you won't miss any new videos. Brookfield is a global clean energy super major. So basically they provide clean energy, uh, for example, with hydro, with wind, with solar, but they also recently went into the area of nuclear energy. And we can see they have a portfolio of 32 gigawatts, which is operational, and a pipeline of 132 gigawatts. They have a market cap of roughly 20 billion, and they trade under four different tickers. And the reason for that is that they have BEP and BPC, for the NICE listed ones and BP.UN uh, for the Canadian listed ones and BPC for Canada. And I'm only going to talk about BEPC in this video. And this is for the reason that BEP is a limited partnership. And here in Germany, for example, if you buy a limited partnership, well, you get a lot of problems with taxes, so it's just super complicated. It is not illegal by any means, but is ridiculously complicated. And that's the reason why they made BPC, so Brookfield Renewable Corporation, and that's just way, way easier for foreign investors. I do not know how it is if you are a Canadian or US citizen. Let's go back to the portfolio and talk about that for a sec. 31 gigawatts is quite a lot of energy. I've read that book from Bill Gates, How to Avoid a Climate Catastrophe, and I can really recommend it. And there he said that one gigawatt is roughly enough energy to power a city like New York. And we can see, or that basically shows us that their already operational portfolio is quite large, and their pipeline is obviously gigantic. But if we take a look at the way energy is used we can see that renewable energy is still a quite large amount, uh, quite small amount, yet to avoid a total climate catastrophe, we should definitely build that out. So we use more renewable energies. And by the way, if you're telling me climate change is not real, go beep yourself. It is, and it is better to avoid it than to get serious with it. And in that case, that is already a certain tailwind for Brookfield because over time we should use less and less coal, for example, and we have to replace that energy and that can be done by Brookfield, for example, with new solar, new wind, but also we have a growing energy demand and that growing energy demand should mainly be or should in best case only be renewable energy. So the growth of energy worldwide, of demand for energy worldwide, and the fact that we have to replace the not green energy with renewable energies, these are two massive tailwinds for Brookfield in the first place. You got a credit rating of BB plus, 11 years debt to majority, and available liquidity of 3.9 billion. I just want to stress that for a sec. Here you can see that the interest rates have recently been increased by the Federal Reserve, also by the Canadian Central Bank or the Australian or the European Central Bank. And with rising interest rates, it is quite useful if your debt has quite a few more years until it matures, because then you are not uh, really impacted that much by these higher interest rates. 
We had a distribution of $1.35 per unit and a target annual growth rate of that by uh, of 5 to 9%. Although I have to admit, I can't remember the last time they increased it by 9%. And the implied yield is 4%, but we'll take a look at those numbers uh, specifically later. As I mentioned earlier, they are a global green energy major super player. And here we see their portfolio and the potential where their portfolio or how, how large their portfolio could be. This is not the operational portfolio. And we see that North America is by far the most dominant player. So especially the United States. Um, why is that? Well, the United States are, as far as I know, currently the only area where the economy is, I wouldn't necessarily say booming, but in a significantly better shape than in the rest of the world. Like for example, here in Europe, since the war in Ukraine, we, we're definitely not booming. We're, I would say, having rather tough time. And another thing is, another tailwind for Brookfield basically is, Germany noticed that being so reliant on gas from a guy like Putin is not necessarily the best idea. And one good thing about renewable energy is the sun does always shine, not always, but no one can turn off the sun and no one can turn off the wind. You can stop gas moving from A to B like Putin did, but he will be unable to stop any of the solar panels here in Germany to run. I think you get my point. And also, for example, with the United States, it's obviously it's quite a lovely thing if you have a country which is independent from energy and a country which is or from foreign energy in a country as large as the United States, which consumes a lot of energy, or is it then has a major advantage if it can produce that energy by solar. And another thing is the Inflation Reduction Act. Often, not obviously, but the inflation reduction is also a big plus for investment in renewables, especially in the United States. Here we can see we got hydro, wind, utility scale solar, DG, don't know what DG is, uh, storage and sustainable solutions. And we can see the largest scale or development is with. Uh, solar, followed by DG storage and solutions and wind and only small amount with hydro. Uh, but the, the, the thing with hydro is you cannot just build a dam anywhere. But the good thing is about hydro, or what I at least like about hydro, once that dam is built, um, if, if it's built, it, it provides cash flow for a long time for a very, very long time. It's just a nice thing. Um, here we see that they do sell that energy also to corporates via PPAs, which is short for per Power Purchase Agreement. So for example, Amazon goes or JP Morgan goes to Brookfield and said, we need renewable energy and we want to buy it for the next 10 years at a certain price and then they negotiate and then it's that they have a certain price and then they sell that energy to Amazon and get cash for that. And that's obviously a rather nice thing because well, Amazon or JP Morgan, they always need energy and Brookfield provides energy so they can quite easily say, okay, for the next 10 years, we'll roughly make that amount of money Okay, that's fine. So the PPAs or these corporate buyers are, as we can see, increasing a lot and they will continue to increase. Governments have stepped up their commitment to policy action. Here we see that US Inflation Reduction Act, UK energy security, repowering the EU and China with the 14 five year plan. Let's see where that's going. Another Tailwind for renewable energy is simply that it is significantly lower than any other form of energy. Here we see the path that needs to be achieved for net zero, and we need to exceed the 2020 levels by four times. And again, that is a massive tailwind 
Here we can again see what that means. 32 gigabits is 100% of Bergen's anonymism. And if you had a 132 gigabytes, that would be 95% of Australia's emission. By the way, although I love Australia much, and I, uh, my girlfriend and I are considering moving there, I'm not that happy about how in, uh, Australia is regarding its emissions. There could be better there. A lot of countries could. I hope any of my Australian viewers now not angry. Here we see the performance um, of Brookfield and we see the distribution for 6% combined annual growth rate. It is absolutely fine with me. 16% total return by the ways. Here we can see the cash flows again. Um, currently, the vast majority is coming from hydro, then wind, then solar, and then the rest. And the vast majority comes from North America, but they want to obviously build it out. And here we have these PPAs, what I talked about earlier. From here, let's go and take a look at a few, few more financial numbers. They target six to seven billion uh, over the next five years as capital deployment. And, and that's something I love because the more capital they deploy, not necessarily the more, but if they deploy more capital, that most likely leads to more money they make from that capital. Because if you buy, I don't know, a solar park worth six billion, and that gives you, I don't know, 600 million return. That is nice. But if you buy one for 12 billion, and that gives you 1.2 billion return, that's nicer. On the other side, if you buy one for 1.2 1 1 billion or for 12 billion, and that just gives you 600 million as a return, it's not that nice because then the yield is significantly lower. So what I want to say with that is I love that they deploy so much capital. I would love to deploy them more to see them deploy more capital if that capital is deployed smart. And that here we see inflation, margin enhancement, development pipeline, and M&A is their way how they want to achieve 10% or more than 10% FFO per unit growth annually until 2027. I would love to see that because FFO growth then turns into distribution growth, most likely, and as lovely as an investor because then I get money back via a dividend. Here we can again see they have secured 16 gigabytes of the of the development just over the next three years. I hope that that also then is going to be built um, because here we can see that massive pipeline that is a pipeline that is not something to be commissioned in the next three years, so to be built within that time. And another thing, lastly, I would like to show you that is that we, uh, earlier we talked about West uh, about nuclear energy and that is what they did with Westinghouse. Um, here we can see Brookfield Renewable and its institutional partner commit 100% of Westinghouse for nine billion. Brookfield and institutional will acquire 51% of Westinghouse and Camille will acquire the remaining 49%. And the lovely thing here is they have a lot of revenue comes from service contracts. And service contracts are always amazing. Why are they amazing? Well, because they're renew, uh, recurring revenue. And well, <laughs> recurring revenue is amazing because it comes over and over again. And it does offer a lot of money, which can be made with that. From here, let's take a look at a few more financial numbers and then at the chart. So this is BEP. Um, this is the American one. We have roughly 5 billion as a market cap. Um, by the way, earlier when they said 20, that is if you combine all of these roughly. We had roughly a 5% yield of four, 14 price to earnings ratio, which is not that expensive. And we go to statements, go to income, go to annual. We see we got a growth in the revenue, which is lovely. We got growth in net income no we don't why because unfortunately trading view does not show ffo if you know a website where it can see ffo properly please let me know that there's a sad thing that we can't see it but we can see the ebitda grow lovely over time 
Um, we see the balance sheet, net debt, 13 billion. Why do they have so much debt? If you take 2 billion and of EBITDA and then put that into these 14 billion, uh, 13 billion, it's a ratio of seven, which is not healthy at all. Um, but you have to understand that often it is that these projects, so for example, a certain solar park has debt on it and that that will be paid over, I don't know, 20 year time span. And then that thing is free because often they finance a certain project with these long-term debts and this why Typically, not always uh, renewable energy companies have higher debt. Check out Atlantica Sustainability. There they explain it beautifully how that works in their investor presentation. Or just subscribe because I'll make a video about it. Now let's take a look at the cash flow and we see the free cash flow uh, does grow over time. Oh well, not quite. From here, let's take a look at dividends. Um, here we can see the dividend does grow over time. Quite lovely. I don't again know why don't know why they're showing it here wrong because we do not see any decline from 2021 to 2022 here. Sorry. Let's go back to the overview. Um, 5% year, that is something I would like to keep you in mind. This is the chart and we see Brookfield Renewable Corporation had a tough time. So they had this massive boom here during COVID. And since then they massively sold off. And now they trade at 27, basically this price where they started. And I think for a long-term investor, if you have a monthly savings plan, you can just start it because I, I really believe that the company is a good long-term investment. I own 135 stocks. Just price-wise with the price action, we have a downward trend, obviously. From that low, there is an absolute strong downward trend. And interest rates do impact that kind of business because it is, as mentioned earlier, hard, is more expensive to the to leverage and you need a lot of money to finance those projects and that does have an impact and if you take a look at other utilities or other uh, companies regard in the in the renewable energy area they all have the same problem um so if you want to massively buy i would definitely wait for a turnaround but what you can do if you want to Think about maybe cash that you could put at 24. Um, what would be the yield then? 0. point times four divided by 24. 5.3% yield, so quite lovely. I mean, I'm not sure whether we have liquid option at 22, but then you got roughly 6% yield. So, so that's quite interesting. And also if we go to uh, BP, so the limited partnership and take a look here at the long-term chart um we see they had that they more or less traded sideways for ages and then we had that massive boom here from 2019 to 2021 and since then we have that correction and i really can't say wh where there might be any resistance um, from the price action. So I think a monthly savings plan might be a good thing. Yeah. At a, I mean, at 20, it is, it is just getting ridiculously nice from the yield that you get out of the business. But on the other side, you also should be a bit cautioned if you have such a steep downward trends and also I mean, I own the stock, I'm obviously biased, but please do your own research. With that said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. See you soon. Bye.